Hi, my name is Farrell Gar, and today I'm going to take you through how to dictate a CT of the admin pelvis. Uh, this is pretty much uh, how I interpret and dictate uh, in real time, and I'm basically going to tell you exactly what I'm thinking as I'm going through the case. And uh, for reference, this is a anonymous, anonymized CT of the admin pelvis. This is with intravenous and oral contrast. And uh, <clears throat> this we have multiplanar reformats, and I'll basically take you through start to finish how I interpret this, say, in the on-call setting. So first, I'm just going to say, you know, history, which is abdominal pain, the technique. I can take you through is basic contiguous axial CT images of the abdomen and pelvis from the lung bases to the pubic symphysis. I have coronal and sagittal reformats available for review. And I'm going to go ahead and start with the axials. I'm going to go ahead and start with the lungs. So first, I'm looking in lung windows. I'm looking at each lung. And I'm basically looking for effusions or consolidations, pneumonia, congestion, any findings I can pick up, small nodules. I'm not seeing anything. The lungs are clear. Switching over to abdominal windows, looking at the heart, looking for overall size, and looking for any pericardial effusion, which I don't see. So the heart is normal size. There's no pericardial effusion. So now going down to the liver, or going down to the abdomen, first thing I'm going to do is look at the liver. I'm looking for homogeneity. I'm looking for focal lesions, if there are any. I'm also looking at the liver contour. Is there a nodular contour like in cirrhosis? I'm not seeing anything. I'm going to narrow the windows. Again, just looking at the liver, looking at the left lobe and the right lobe, looking for any focal lesions like an abscess. I'm not seeing anything. I'm just going to flip over to coronal plane. I like to look at the size of the liver. So here I have the size, 16.7 centimeters, normal size, uh, no evidence of hepatomegaly. While I'm here, I'm just going to look at the common bile duct. I can see it nicely here in this plane. And I can see the common bile duct is not dilated. This is the forward hepatis. I'm also seeing the uh, portal vein. And I'm seeing back here the hepatic artery. <clears throat> so I'm coming back to the axials. I'm just going to switch over to normal window. So I looked at the liver. Um, now I've looked at the common bile duct. It's not dilated. I'm also looking for intrahepatic biliary ductal dilatation. Now, unless they're dilated, I'm not really going to see them. So I'm just basically looking to see if I see any dilated bile ducts. They're going to be running along the same distribution of the portal vein here, left here and right portal vein. And now that I'm done with that, I'm going to look at the gallbladder, looking for, uh, you know, is it enlarged? Is it hydropic? Are there any stones? Is there evidence of acute cholecystitis, which would be fluid around the gallbladder or inflammation along the gallbladder? So I'm not seeing any of that. So there's no evidence for acute cholecystitis. There's no intrahepatic ductal dilatation. There's no extrahepatic ductal dilatation. And there are no focal liver lesions, no evidence for cirrhosis or other diffuse disease. Uh, next on the checklist is the spleen. Here's the spleen. Again, I'm looking for focal lesions. I'm looking for size. I'm not seeing any focal lesions. I'm going to narrow the windows, increase my sensitivity, looking for focal lesions. I'm seeing a small normal finding here, a splenule here, uh, just in the splenic hilum. I'm just going to get a measurement on the spleen. I want to look for a splenomegaly. Say the spleen's infiltrated from... Um, meta metastatic disease or otherwise. This is a normal spleen measurement, 11 centimeters. So there's no evidence of splenomegaly, no focal le splenic lesions, and I'm going to continue my search. So next I'm going to come to the pancreas. So I'm going to start here. This is the third portion of the duodenum as it comes across the retroperitoneum. If I come up, I start to see the unsinent process of the pancreas. Keep coming up, I'm seeing the head of the pancreas. I'm seeing here the common bile duct within the head of the pancreas. And you can see that it's basically curving right along the superior mesenteric vessels here, the artery and the or sorry, the artery and the vein here. The portion of this pancreas right here is the neck, then we have the body and the tail. Basically looking for focal lesions, looking for diffuse disease such as pancreatitis. Um, any fluid collections, I'm not seeing any of that. The pancreas is unremarkable. There are no focal pancreatic lesions. And I continue my search. I'm going to go on to the adrenals. So here's the right adrenal, and here's the left adrenal looking for any adrenal nodules. I can do that pretty nicely here on the coronal uh, plane. I can uh, flip over here to the adrenals. I can see them pretty nicely here. They're basically a Y-shaped organ, and there's no adrenal nodules. The adrenals are unremarkable bilaterally. And I'm going to go ahead and start looking at the kidneys. So I look at each kidney one by one. I'm looking for hydronephrosis. I'm looking for any focal uh, renal lesions, cysts, or masses. And I'm looking for any inflammation around the kidney. I'm not seeing any of that. I'm looking for normal symmetric bilateral enhancement. There's the same contrast phase on both sides. So that's good. And I'm not seeing any hydrouretor. And I'm going to go over to my 
axials now and I'm going to follow the ureters down. You can see here this ureter extending out of the left kidney here and it's going to lay right up on top of this psoas muscle which is just next to the spine. I'm looking at both of them, looking for any hydro ureter, any stones along the ureters. Not seeing any. Now I'm here down at the level of the bladder. Quickly look at the bladder. It should be just full of urine. It shouldn't be full of anything else. There shouldn't be any lesions on the bladder wall. There shouldn't be any thickening on the bladder wall. So the bladder is unremarkable. Um, come, keep coming down. I can see here the prostate. The prostate is uh, normal in size. If I come up a little bit, I can see the seminal vesicles. The seminal vesicles are symmetric in size bilaterally. There's no uh, spocal lesions, so the seminal vesicles are unremarkable. Now I'm basically done with the solid organs. I'm going to do the hollow viscera. I'm going to come up here from the anus and work my way up. So here I'm seeing the rectum here in a presacral location. You can see contrast within the rectum. I'm here at the level of the sigmoid colon. The sigmoid is on a mesentery, so it's going to come in and out of the plane a little bit. I'm following it here. I'm losing it. I'm coming back. I see it here tracking into the left side of the abdomen. So this is the left colon or the descending colon. Coming up here, this is the transverse colon. I'm going to Start to, it's going to come in and out of plane because it's on a mesentery, and uh, I'm looking for, you know, thickening or colitis or uh, inflammation around the colon. I'm not seeing any of that. I'm coming down here, and I'm at the level of the ascending colon. And I come down, I'm losing colon. So I'm going to go ahead to my coronal uh, reformats. I'm trying to find the terminal ilium. I'm trying to find the appendix. So here is the terminal ilium inserting into the colon. You can see here very nicely the fiber fatty lips of the ileocecal valve. And... Uh, so the colon is unremarkable for any thickening or any evidence of obstruction. I'm not seeing the appendix here. Or the patient may have had an appendectomy. So now that I've cleared the colon, I'm going to go ahead and move on. I like to start again with the stomach now. So I'm coming to the stomach, the gastroesophageal junction. I've got the cardia of the stomach. I've got the fundus of the stomach, the body. I've got the distal stomach here. I've got the first portion of the duodenum coming here and the second portion as I come down. And I can see the third portion here as it's coming across the retroperitoneum. And I can see the fourth portion here as it's coming into the jejunum. So they look normal. I don't see any thickening. I don't see any of ulcer disease. I don't see uh, inflammation in that region. So um, there's no evidence of malrotation because the duodenal sweep is normal. I'm just going to show you on the coronal plane so you can get a sense of this normal anatomy. You can see here the uh, second portion, uh, third portion of the duodenum, and the fourth portion. And if you come back here in the region of the portahepitis, you can kind of see the duodenal bulb a little bit there. That's all normal. And now I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the small bowel. So I like to look at the small bowel in the coronal plane. Just kind of focus on the jejunum to start with. I'm looking for any wall thickening. I'm looking for any dilatation like a small bowel obstruction. I'm looking for inflammation of the mesentery. I'm not seeing any of those things. I'm going to focus down now here more on the ilium. Looking for the same thing. Looking for any thickening of any bowel loops. So looking for any obstructed loops. Looking for any uh, inflammation in the mesentery or any nodes. I'm seeing here is just a couple of regular sized lymph nodes right along the mesentery here. This is the uh, superior mesenteric vein here. So everything looks okay. I'm just going to continue my search now. So I'm done with the bowel. I'm going to go ahead and start with the uh, looking for any free fluid or free air. I like to come down to the pelvis for that. So I like to basically you want to see the free fluid layering here within the fat of the peritoneum. And you can see here just some trace free fluid here, this triangular shaped free fluid right here. And that's normal for uh, to have a small amount of free fluid. We're looking for a large amount, so you know something like a uh, you know perforated bowel or a lot of inflammation will cause some free fluid. And uh, you can also look in the sagittal plane, which shows the free fluid very nicely. You just want to see it kind of layering within the pelvis or anywhere else. It could be above the bladder, behind the bowel loops, in front of the bowel loops. You just kind of want to run the uh, dependent portion of the abdomen and just make sure you're not missing any free fluid. After you look for free fluid, I like to look for free air. So basically, I'm going to widen the window and increase the window level. And as I'm coming down, all this, all this dark air that I'm seeing here, None of that should be outside of a bowel loop. That should all be intraluminal. So I'm looking here, I'm not seeing any of that air outside the bowel loop, so there's no free air. So that's helpful. Uh, you'd see free air obviously in a perforation or a recent surgery. So now that I've ruled that out, now it's time to start looking at the vessel. So I'm going to come up here to the thoracic aorta. I'm going to come down to the abdominal aorta. I'm just looking at the aorta, looking at the contrast within it, looking for any aneurysm or 
any inclusive disease. I'm going to follow each iliac here. You can see just a little bit of peripheral uh, thrombus here and uh, some atherosclerotic calcification there on the left external iliac. So you got the externals here. We have the internals here. I'm just looking quickly at that. If you have any major occlusion, do the same thing on the right. I'm just going to follow it back up and uh, now I'm going to go back down and take a look at the uh, veins really quickly too. Make sure there's no uh, venous occlusion here on the left or the right. And this also depends on the contrast phase, so you may not always see uh, contrast in the veins, but if you do, you want to make sure you're not missing any sort of thrombus or clot. Now I want to look at the branches of the aorta. The midline branches here, we have the celiac plexus right here. And I'm just looking here, I got the splenic, vein, or splenic artery. And I've got the uh, left gastric here. And I've got the common hepatic. And it looks patent proximally. And now I'm looking for the SMA. I can see the SMA there, and it looks open and patent. And I'm going to look for the IMA. And I can see it right here coming off the uh, distal abdominal aorta. I can see it coming off there, kind of to the left of midline, just before the bifurcation of the common iliacs. So they look patent. I do like to check the patency of the uh, midline branches, at least the celiac and the SMA on the sagittal. You can see very nicely here, a nice patent celiac trunk. You can see a nice patent SMA. So those look good. Uh, flip back over to the axils. I'm going to look uh, look now just for nodes. I'm just looking for nodes. I'm running the retroperitoneum, looking for any nodes. And I'm looking for any enlarged nodes. You know, one centimeter short axis or larger. I'm seeing a couple inguinal nodes, which are normal. I'm going to run each external iliac here. I'm going to run the internal iliacs. I'm just going to run back up. I'm going to take a little bit more look in the mesentery again, looking for any enlarged nodes. And looking for, you know, greater than one centimeter in short axis diameter. Now, I'm not seeing any adenopathy. Now, I'm going to move on to the anterior abdominal wall. I'm looking at the external, internal, and uh, external oblique, internal oblique. Here's the transversalis muscle here, the recti here. You can see them here. I'm looking for any herniation, any thinning of the wall. Looking here for any inguinal hernias. I'm seeing here the uh, spermatic cord coming out, and that's the normal finding. No herniation, no, no herniation of bowel loops or of any peritoneal fat, so everything looks pretty good. Switching windows again now. I'm basically almost done looking at the bones. So start here with the le ribs on the left, and now I'm going to look over at the ribs on the right. Looking for any focal lesions, any sclerotic lesions, lucent lesions. Um, in the setting of trauma, I'd be looking for fractures. I'm um, just looking at the spinal column now. Um, here at the uh, pelvic bones, and I'm seeing the proximal femurs here. Not seeing any fractures, not seeing any abnormalities or focal lesions. I like showing uh, the bones on the sagittal plane. It really shows the spinal column to advantage here. I've filleted the spine here a little bit. You can see there's no compression deformities. There's nice normal alignment. And I just like to flip over and see each uh, hip joint in the sagittal too, make sure I'm not missing any fractures in that plane. So almost done. From this, last thing I'm going to do is just kind of look very quickly at the soft tissues. So flip over to regular windows and just kind of looking at the soft tissues in the front quickly, and then I'm looking at the soft tissues in the back quickly, seeing if I can pick up any additional findings. I'm not seeing anything. I'm going to do one last run, just look at the inside of the abdomen one last time to see if anything catches my eye before I'm pretty much done with the case. And I'm not seeing anything, so pretty much this is a normal case, so I'm ready to dictate the impression. So the impression colon is basically uh, no acute abdominal pelvic disease, and that's the end dictation. Um, so I hope that was helpful. That's pretty much how I go through a CT of the abdomen pelvis uh, pretty much every time when I'm looking at an on-call case. Um, hope that was helpful and thank you very much for watching.